The next one says rationalizing the denominator that has a square root in the denominator. So basically all you do to rationalize the denominator is you multiply by whatever's in the denominator so you can make a perfect square. So on these first ones, here I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by the square root of 11. That's going to make an equivalent fraction. So, 5 times the square root of 11, we just write 5 square root of 11. We can't combine them because one's under the square root and one is not. On the bottom, however, when you take the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, you get the square root of? You multiply. Yep, you multiply the 11 times the 11. The square root of 121. Now, 121 should be a perfect square, just like on those previous ones. When I had square root of 5 times square root of 5, we got the square root of 25. The square root of 11 times the square root of 11 gives us the square root of 121. And what's the square root of 121? Jeez, I had one of those papers, you know. Grab your calculator. Okay. Let's use the square root key on that. Oh, I don't use the carrot key, right? Nope, you use the square root symbol. Equals, mine's just error. <laughs> Eleven? Eleven. Right. Because we had to take 11 times 11. So now we have 5 square root of 11 over 11. Now, the only way we could simplify it is the front numbers you could reduce. You can't reduce something with a square root and something without a square root. So we can't reduce this one. We're done. This is just going to be my answer then. So the whole thing here is we multiplied by the same thing as the denominator, which made it a perfect square and gave us that number, right? So on the second one, 2 over the square root of 3, what are we going to multiply by? The square root of 3. So square root of 3 times the top and the square root of 3 times the bottom. So on the top we're going to get? Square root of 6. Nope. 2. 2. Square root of, square root of 3. If this 2 was also under a square root, then we'd get the square root of 6 because we could multiply them. But since they're not both under square roots, we can't put them together. We just write it as 2 square root of 3. On the bottom we're going to get? Square root, square root of 9, which should be a perfect square, and the square root of 9 is just 3. three. So we're going to have 2 square root of 3 over 3, and that's going to be my answer because, again, I can't simplify the 2 thirds. So on number 6, if I want to rationalize my denominator, the first thing I'm going to do is times by the square root of 3 again. So we're going to get 6 square root 3 over square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. 3. So we have 6 square root of 3 over 3. Now this one we can simplify because we can reduce the 6 and the 3, right? Yep. So 3 goes into here once and into here two times, I just get 2 square root of 3 because I don't need to put it over the 1 on the bottom. 